the panel of the chart so that um, during the webinar I can answer your questions. So I hope that everyone is ready and I apologize for a delay we had, but I think that now everyone is ready to start. Great, everything is good. So uh, today we have an important topic which is called trading using market sentiment. And uh, well, more most traders think of this topic as a kind of general idea, something to talk about, but um, they don't take it seriously enough and um, that I think is a mistake because uh, learning how to evaluate and use market sentiment in your trading is uh, may give you an important edge uh, in this kind of activity. So um, let's begin. We will talk about various things which are related to trading sentiment, how to measure sentiment, uh, the types of market sentiment, how to uh, relate yourself versus the crowd or maybe to the crowd and things like that. If you want, you can share your experience and your thoughts on the topic with us in the chat. So the first thing I want to underline that the market is not some abstract thing. It is um, created, it consists of various economic agents which um, participate in trading, which buy and sell various financial assets. And uh, we can say that the market is essentially a kind of crowd made by various kinds of participants. Some of, this, some of the participants are big, like uh, banks, uh, commercial banks, central banks, um, big companies, big hedge funds. Some of them are small, like individual traders. The market is a result, the sum of actions of um, all these various economic agents. And um, the actions of the market as a result depend on how this crowd is feeling about the future, about particular assets. Sometimes uh, these feelings are logical to you, sometimes not. You feel that uh, the market is perceiving the situation in the wrong way, but still you need to have an understanding of what the market is up to in order to trade with the market and not against it, because it's clear that an individual trader can do nothing to uh, make the market reverse and change direction, unless, of course, this is uh, the market that is really small, like um, some really, really uh, small cryptocurrency, for example, where there are few market participants and an action of one can change the situation. Even, uh, well, Sometimes traders make mistakes, like putting an extra zero to the amount they trade in big banks and dealing desks, and that may make an impact on the market, but that happens rarely. And the situation when George Soros made uh, the British pound um, collapse and um, puzzled the Bank of England with his actions, took place long ago in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. And now, of course, we live in different environments where we have to adapt to the market and not vice versa. So market analysis um, can be fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and uh, sometimes uh, we distinguish this Sentiment analysis as a separate part of market analysis. Uh, it is logical that this part of market analysis has a close relation to fundamental analysis uh, because fundamental analysis studies uh, the reasons why financial assets make their moves. So uh, sentiment and changes in sentiment represent one of these reasons. 
Um, however, the distinction here lies in the fact that um, sentiment, the market sentiment relates to more short term short periods of time, while fundamental analysis can give us an understanding of some big and general trends, some uh, strategic direction where the um, assets value will go over time, like from weeks to months and so on. So sentiment is what the market is thinking, what the market is expecting. And if you read financial news on the day-to-day -day basis, for example, Bloomberg, so you open their main article and you can read in the morning, um, one day, for example, that the market sentiment is good, uh, traders stopped worrying about um, US-China trade war, they are optimistic, they think that uh, this question will be resolved, so they buy risk assets, so the Australian dollar is rising, gold is declining, so everybody is happy and we get a particular picture. And you think, well, uh, this news, um, I know the market sentiment now, you make your trades on the basis of this information. And the next day when you open Bloomberg in the morning, you see that um, nothing happened really, but the market sentiment is negative because the market is having a negative view of the US-China trade war. Sometimes analysts can um, find a reason why that happened, sometimes not. So uh, we can be kind of puzzled with these changes of sentiment in the short term from the day-to-day -day basis. Um, this changes of sentiment, which are related to risks, we will uh, discuss. And I think that um, this um, risk on risk off sentiment is a kind of separate thing, uh, which needs to be uh, analyzed apart from all other things, because it really um, changes on the day to day basis and. Um, I don't think that uh, that may be a subject of um, some really long-term trends. So uh, I think that um, everyone is more or less familiar with this thing, but we just go through it to remind you about this. So risk sentiment, a part of market sentiment, it is natural because uh, the risk is um, one of the main conditions and uh, characteristics of the market, we know that the higher the yield, the bigger the risk and uh, vice versa. This is how the market works. And uh, at some moments, at some days, traders may be uh, positive about risk. At some days, they may be negative. Positive risk sentiment is usually created when we see good economic data and um, especially when these good economic data releases repeat over time. Traders do distinguish between various kinds of economic data and for the risk sentiment, uh, the releases in key economies, the largest economies, represent the greatest importance. So the United States and China represent the key economies of the world kind of benchmarks for the market's risk sentiment because when we see slowdown in China's economic growth or US economic growth, everyone starts uh, speaking about the global economic growth slowdown and that kind of spreads over all financial markets. We see that phrase repeated everywhere in the media uh, as various um, writers copy it from one article to another with these arguments and as a result everyone starts believing that um, oh my god the economic growth is slowing down it's a problem we do not know what will happen in the future so we need some assets or some investments that will help to protect our funds in this uncertain times um, as protection means that 
uh, the risks should be lower, the yield uh, of such financial instruments which offer us safety is naturally lower as well, so then the market sentiment is risk off. Traders and investors um, prefer lower yielding assets. Investors, uh, of course, look at the long term. Uh, traders, short term speculators try to play on these uh, swings in the market moves caused by economic data releases uh, to buy uh, this lower yielding assets in the short term to get profit from that. The lower yielding assets, the classic one, are U.S. treasuries, gold, and wreckage currencies uh, like Japanese yen, uh, Swiss franc, and, well, we can say that the U.S. dollar belongs to this group as well. The position of the USD changes from time to time, but now we can clearly see that um, the USD uh, is regarded as a kind of safe haven. If you look at the performance of the US dollar versus the Chinese Yuan, you will see that all trade wars and uh, the hype about that makes the USD appreciate versus the Chinese currency. Um, so for now, the relative stability and strength of American economy is uh, providing this safe haven refuge status to the US dollar. Gold is a classic uh, storage of value, so um, it is a thing where, to which traders apply when they are disappointed in other assets. And uh, treasuries, um, US treasury bonds represent a kind of safe haven investment because no one believes that um, this monetary system of the United States can collapse. So it is uh, regarded as a risk-free investment and is used as uh, the base in calculations for different interest rates as well. So risk off assets, here they are. Risk off assets are very different assets um, like stocks where you have no guarantees of the future return, the future price, everything and anything may happen with the company. So the stock's value may stay the same roughly, may uh, plummet or may soar, depending on very different conditions, uh, the external environment, the internal affairs of the company, the risks are plentiful here. Oil is uh, performing better in the risk on sentiment uh, because um, the price of oil depends on the demand for this resource and the demand will be higher if global economy is doing fine, if um, everyone has um, cap capability to increase production, if everyone invests actively. So, uh, that's why we see that oil price uh, is increasing than the market is in the risk positive mode. And uh, commodity and, emer and emerging market currencies are also performing rather good in risk on sentiment because, well, traders are more bold, they um, are ready to take the riskier bet and uh, they want not only to preserve their funds, but to make higher gains. So greed, desire to get more is instantly awakened here. And these are the currencies which benefit from this desire. So um, this changes in the market's risk sentiment from risk on to risk off and vice versa. Um, are visible on the day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, um, well, um, much depends on the data releases we see in the economic calendar. So the short-term swings may provide some trade opportunities. Um, and if you uh, consult the news and consult the calendar, well, um, 
together with some technical levels on the chart, this uh, should give you an idea of the trading scenario, which will uh, hold the highest probability of success. For the long term, of course, uh, it is also somewhat possible to make this estimate of risk on or risk off. Uh, analysts include these estimates in their annual forecasts. I don't believe that it is really possible to give good forecasts for a year in advance, but of course, some trends may be identified with this or that precision. And uh, if we see continuous underperformance of key economies and really serious global problems, um, political problems, for example, which create uncertainty for business and may spread to financial markets because financial markets are closely tied to um, economies. Uh, well, um, we simply see that these serious problems will keep affecting the markets for some time and um, that may result in some longer term trends in markets risk sentiment. For example, the current situation with trade wars between the United States and China. Um, as far as I remember, in March, traders turned very optimistic. They thought that the deal is already here, so that uh, the parties have agreed on most parts of their trade agenda. So everyone was calm. We saw that S&P 500 was rising in March, in April to a new record highs. Uh, but then in May, we got this sudden uh, news flow from Donald Trump, from China, the reaction. And now it is clear that the situation won't uh, Result, be resolved until the end of June at best, and maybe even um, the delay they will last even longer, the uncertainty uh, will last even longer, maybe that will turn into a cold war between the US and China, as we see a lot of measures from both sides. And uh, Trump will meet China's president uh, only at G20 summit at the end of June, so no uh, decisions, no big decisions are expected until then. So we can assume on the basis of this information that indeed uh, during the next um, two or four weeks or so, we will get the situation where when the risk of sentiment of the market will be the main sentiment, of course. On the day-to-day -day basis, we may get some positive commands here and there because the market is not able to move in a straight line to the downside or to the upside. It uh, makes stops and uh, the market take, may, takes cues for the smaller corrections from some statements, from some minor events. So uh, smaller changes in risk sentiment during that period are, of course, also uh, possible. Um, what are the ways to estimate the market sentiment if we get beyond a risk sentiment and uh, get to particular instruments we trade? First of all, uh, we have an indicator of volumes that is especially helpful if you trade stocks because uh, there you get real volumes. And the main idea about volumes is that if the move of the market to the upside is confirmed by increasing volume, it means that the uptrend has the power of momentum of the market that indeed market players are investing in this asset and pushing its price higher. If we see that the price went up and the volumes declined, it means that that was some final maybe attempt of bulls to push the price higher and uh, the price will likely uh, reverse down as 
this movement to the upside was not confirmed by volumes. If you trade currencies, there you will have to deal with tick volume and uh, indicators like on balance volume, which are available in trading software of MetaTrader. That, of course, is not as good as real volumes in stock markets, but um, in the absence of other indicators of volume, um, it will be necessary to just limit yourself to that. Other important indicators to consider are the volatility index, uh, VIX, which is also known as the fear index. And um, the basic idea about this index is that the higher this index is, the greater is the implied volatility and the possibility of a change in the current trend. If the indicator is low, that um, means that the current trend will likely continue. So you can uh, easily find uh, this um, indicator on various websites in the internet. It's not a problem, uh, not a secret. So um, it's a way to consult the market sentiment and the expectations of um, uh, traders. Another um, source of information is CFTC report um, commitments of traders uh, by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This report is released um, every Friday and the data is for the week which ended on uh, Tuesday. So uh, we can see that the data from this information source comes from a time lag of, uh, well, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days. Um, still, um, this is a good uh, source of information about the market and some traders even use this information as um, one of the key elements of their trade decisions. So, um, uh, what this data is about. Um, CFTC provides us with uh, the sizes and number of short and long positions for various kinds of financial instruments. There are commodities, there are currencies there, uh, so that we can see uh, which is the position of the market in general. If we see that there is a net short position, it is clear that sellers exceed buyers. If it is a net long position, it means that buyers are in charge. And uh, the data comprises um, the estimate about large speculators. They have a particular line there which shows positions of large speculators. And as large speculators are the main movers of the market, they have more market moving potential than small players, it is logical to see how these players are positioned. Of course, uh, it is necessary to track the changes in sentiment and there is some time lag, but for some longer term trades, uh, this information is useful. It is also useful if you are not sure in your current trend and you want to confirm it, for example, a trend on the daily chart that would nicely fit with uh, the information from CFTC. It is also easily Googled, so not a problem to find it. In addition, um, notice that then positions of traders, either net short or net long, reach some extreme levels. Uh, the possibility that at some point a wave of covering of these positions will occur will be rather high because then the market leans to one side, the buying side, for example, too heavily. Um, it will have to reverse at some point because uh, just it is not possible that the bullish trades will increase indefinitely. So um, some traders um, see that as a warning sign that the uh, net long position becomes too big or net short position becomes too big. So these things have to be analyzed when you consider this CFTC data. 
FedWatch tool is um, a nice tool um, for every trader because it shows us um, how much the market is pricing in changes in um, Federal Reserve's interest rate. You can uh, also put this line into Google and the first link will be yours. You will be able to see the, uh, how uh, the futures on federal funds rate price in interest rate uh, hikes and cuts for a couple of meetings ahead. So you will get this picture and you will understand how much of the upcoming rate cut or hike is priced in at the current level of the USD and, for example, S&P 500. Uh, a nice thing to consult as well. And finally, uh, we can also estimate uh, market sentiment through some influencers, uh, people whose opinions uh, matter. Uh, some of them make some regular statements. We know that various analytical forecasts do have an impact on stock markets um, and move stocks, for example, um, some bank, Nomura, um, they have um, worsened their forecast about Apple, if I'm not mistaken, last week, and the stock declined. Something like that happens. Some uh, important people make, make these comments, and of course, this is not like scheduled, but they, um, in many cases, express uh, the opinion of the industry. Um, the first thing, the first person who comes to my mind here is um, Jamie Dimon, who uh, makes a lot of statements about Bitcoin, and indeed um, his comments may affect the value of the cryptocurrency. He has a long story of firstly denying uh, Bitcoin, then accepting it, so it's uh, kind of um, well, interesting to hear from him from time to time. So uh, another thing I have to mention at this webinar is uh, the loss of sentiment. Um, it is not enough to de determine the market sentiment at a particular point in time. It is necessary to develop an understanding how this sentiment evolves during the course of time. So um, when the market expects something, for example, a positive uh, reading of US GDP growth higher than expecting expected uh, post of this data, traders start to buy the USD in advance before the release because, well, um, these are their expectations. They trade on what they expect. The market, um, as a result, is moved not by events or not only by events, but by expectations to a great deal because uh, a lot of movement in financial assets happen uh, before the actual events. If traders have some um, ideas of what to expect, uh, like they have some dates for central bank meetings, they have some dates for uh, news releases, so they uh, can expect something relative to that date and they can buy in advance if they think that the release will be good or they land will be good and after the event actually happens, if indeed everything is like they expected, they fix their profit, take their money and um, as a result the price declines uh, despite the fact that the actual release is good because the movement already happened. So if you track a particular financial asset, if you know which events are listed in the economic calendar which will uh, make an impact on the currency, for example, um, look at the short-term charts to see whether the market has started uh, trending in line with uh, the forecast which is listed in the economic calendar and in line with the general uh, rhetoric you can find in um, market analytics about that instrument. It indeed can 
be done and distinguished. So uh, if you spend time on looking at the charts and at the news, you uh, will be able to get an opinion of whether the market has already priced in something or it had not for some reason so that uh, the price action will be different. Pay attention to this fact and try to see how much and what exactly is priced in uh, in the asset you trade. In addition, uh, uh, I have to include here the thing that um, sometimes uh, traders uh, want to pick out the dips in the market and that is a perfectly normal strategy in an uptrend when they estimate their market sentiment as positive in general in the long term and fundamentals are good. Um, maybe some dip in the market sentiment happened, but they understand that all is fine in general, so they buy. And catching the falling knives, that uh, the price is rapidly falling, uh, you try to get uh, against this market in the opposite direction, and well, the result is pretty some in many cases. So um, in these cases, it is necessary not to rush in a trade, but to uh, think for some time. Um, another advice is to try to see the market as a crowd more. Um, understand that the force of this crowd is really strong and you are not able to overcome it. So fighting the trend is surely a losing game and uh, trend trading is the most logical thing to do in many cases. Sometimes, of course, we trade in the shorter term, but uh, the general idea still stands. We need to be aware of trends. Um, it is always great to catch this wave of a trend, but um, still you need to understand what is happening in the market, why this trend is taking place, uh, how are the markets feeling if they are really positive if the analysts have price targets which are really far away on the upside and there are other positive indications well uh, maybe indeed this is the trend that will um, persist for some time if you however see that there are divergences between the reality and the market sentiment it is uh, time for you to really think whether you want to stay in this trend because um, every trend reverses at some point and if you see that the market is getting too high and there are problems related to uh, the economic reasons why uh, this asset is going up um, you will need to understand that at some points, so these economic reasons will become stronger than uh, the uptrend, and the uptrend will need to adjust um, to this economic reality, which is not so good. So, uh, di distinguish between the sentiment, which results in uh, the technical picture we see on the chart, and the um, fundamentals, the economic reasons that may not agree with this picture. The goal, the ideal goal of every trader is to join the trend at the early stage. And to do that, um, you need to um, follow existing trends to see when it is likely to end in order to um, enter the market well when the new trend appears at the early point and or at least to identify that the market starts trending there are good reasons for that trend and you can join in and uh, finally um, the addition to the previous uh, idea is that um, in technical analysis in sentiment analysis different phases of the market are distinguished uh, related to trends. Uh, the idea is that every trend starts with the action of so-called smart money, uh, some professional investors who 
uh, have their reasons to start a trend, uh, who know more than ordinary people. And um, at first, the first accumulation phase, the market is trading more or less sideways and the general uninformed public is not in this market. Um, it doesn't recognize the trend. Uh, when there are uh, reports in the media uh, which starts to appear after the trend slowly but surely gathers strength, general public notices the trend, joins in, we get the hype, we get the talk, it is public participation phase, and at some point it will end with the excess phase uh, where the professional money will leave the market at the end of the public participation phase, but uh, the people who are in the fear of missing out of a good trend will still try to join in at these last stages of the trend. So we can see volatile spikes during the excess phase. However, that um, will uh, they will be disappointed because big market players will close their positions um, and this uh, entire actions, combined actions of these market players will make uh, the trend reverse. So, uh, of course, it is uh, hard to distinguish these phases in um, every tra trends, especially if these are some short-term trends on small time frames. And yet, uh, bear in mind that uh, every trend has this kind of structure. So the longer it exists, the more questions you should ask about the market sentiment. So um, remember, we talked about how a sentiment shifts from day to day, and that you can establish on the basis of some uh, news in the economic calendar, which are for this week, uh, for example, which already happened, which are awaited tomorrow, and uh, the political events which can be find, found in financial newspapers. But um, phases of the market, uh, this analysis relates more to the attempt to establish the longer-term sentiment of the market. Usually, the main questions which um, which interest traders and represent the drivers of sentiment are interest rates of central banks because they have a wide impact on financial instruments. So uh, all in all, you need to be aware of the market's feeling about the Federal Reserve and um, other central banks which are related to the instruments you trade. And um, the sentiment, of course, is, um, of course, related to the economies of these countries as well because central bank's policy um, kind of uh, relates to this economic stuff um, naturally. I have here the chart of Bitcoin as the illustration of the previous um, market phase story. Remember that there are other history of uh, financial bubbles now we see that Bitcoin is once again uh, rising in price. Uh, I don't think that we have this um, hype about the cryptocurrency um, at these levels because uh, a lot of um, unqualified investors who uh, were really uh, excited about Bitcoin in 2017 now forgot about it. Uh, so we probably won't have this excessive growth um, in the scale we saw in 2017, but still um, it is necessary to make good analysis of the market sentiment before uh, trading this kind of financial asset. This is just an example. You can find um, the examples of how uh, market sentiment ref reflects on the price in any kind of uh, market. So this was uh, my uh, today's message to you about the market's uh, sentiment. 
So I really hope that um, I managed to tell you something interesting today and you will digest this information. Uh, I will be very happy to answer your questions if you get such um, at the upcoming webinars with Tradimo as well. In the meantime, I remind you about the premium version of Tradimo with various signals and personalized learning support. So uh, I think that it will be helpful for you as well. So I encourage you to check the information at the website. So guys, thank you for your attention today. I wish everyone great at trading. I hope that everyone is now more concerned about market sentiment because it is really an important task, no universal approach really to that. But at least um, what I do, I try to look at the indicators I mentioned today. Um, I try to distinguish the situation when trends go bad and well of course short-term market sentiment is also what i need to check on day-to-day -day basis so you can just note this few important things about sentiment and try to use them in your trades and by the way there are various websites which kind of show you uh, that 50% of traders are in favor of buying euro, 50% of traders are against of buying the euro. Um, I don't recommend you to look at the internet, things like that. Uh, that is not the proper analysis of the sentiment. We do not know where that comes from, what data it incorporates, so better to check some uh, really important market bodies which provide information, maybe the delay, but we know uh, what this data shows us that it comes from a reliable source. So that is another recommendation. So thank you guys. The recording will be at Tradimo YouTube channel if you want to rewatch it. All the best to you in your life and trading and see you at the next webinars with Tradimo. Bye-bye. Thank you as well.